But the only thing this Datsun has in common with the Oldsmobile is that they're both antiques. <laughs> on the sway bar or not? Oh, no, surely do. there's something else. Actually, I should make you do it. It's your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're doing it, brother? <laughs> we might as well be. Yeah. Um, there's nothing good to hook to, so I'm hooking to an A-arm. A-arms work. Okay. Oh, yeah. I forgot these had that old, old school style. I would make fun of you and say, oh yeah, yeah, sure you do, but you actually do know, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. You know, um, I don't think you're... Them back in the day. Well, these, huh? God, you're going to need to swing as wide as you can. Yeah. Because okay. I can at least back up. Okay. If you can. All right. They grow good. Yeah. yeah. They're heavy enough, yeah. but they got enough power. Shifter in neutral. She already is, I think. Neutral's the second on one of these. <laughs> they standardized that shift in 65. Yep. <laughs> Ready. First time she's moved in a while. That's fine. We made it! So here is the 59 Oldsmobile. Like any old car that's a project, it's gonna have its good points and its bad points. Some people think the primer spots are cool. There's some rust, missing trim pieces here and there. Pretty funky cool back end on that. Just a cool relic of its time. I did file for a title for the car, so that's all good. She's rolling on 15 inch Buick wheels, which are not original. Would have had 14s from the factory for an Oldsmobile. emblem on the hood there you can see it's got the rocket in the middle but the old vintage style it's kind of cool piece it's a mix of the 40s look with the 50s look all the glass on the car is good unfortunately the original seats have gone missing somebody's put the 
seats out of like a 70s. Could be a Chevelle or Impala in there. So, dash is pretty decent. The pad is nice, no cracks. Showing 90,000 miles, which I believe is original. It is a factory AC car. Ignition key's still in the dash. Don't always find that. Previous owner said this car had been driven to the back there about three years ago, and they just shut it off. Never did anything with it because the brakes were out. Last plates on it were like 20 years ago. Complete intact. Big old air cleaner on there. Need to get that off to see what everything looks like underneath. Looks like at least hasn't really been full of critters. Well, they've been in there anyway, though. Garb looks clean enough inside. We do have some plug wires chewed off. Norway rat, number one invasive species. Front teeth never stop growing. So they're always looking to chew on soft stuff to keep them worn down, whether it's wood or rubber, wire, anything of that sort. Got a mechanical fan on it, so I'm able to grab hold of that. So I can grab the pulley there. Engine does rock, so that's a good sign. Fast forward several months, and luckily I was able to find a correct set of wheels and hubcaps for the car. Say fairly correct, these are 15s. Originals would have been 14s, but I doubt there's too many people around that'll argue or take issue with that upgrade. 14 inch tires are super hard to find anymore unless you're gonna spend tons of money on them. So 15's pretty practical. And best part is they do mount the factory dog dish caps there. So not too much to argue with about that. I've got the car pulled out next to the building and the occasion for that is that I have listed it and the 1964 Datsun pickup on Big Iron's collector car auction. And so if you're seeing this fairly soon after the video is posted, they are live, they are available to bid. That sale does end March 10th. So if you have any interest in these two vehicles, you'll want to register in a timely fashion and get your bid in. Use the channel for a mix of entertainment as well as shameless plugs. And so this is the shameless plug portion with the result that if someone's interested in a super cool 59 Olds four-door flat top or a very rare 64 Datsun, uh, this is your chance. I was able to get the trunk open, take a look inside. Fairly rusty, but anybody that's been around any of these 59 and 60 GM cars 
pretty well aware how the flat floors are in them and so that's kind of one of those things that's just really par for the course passenger door panel is in there at least have the hard parts for the patterns and then was super excited to find the front fender trim pieces for that passenger fender car had been running three years ago and I don't see any reason why it won't start and run again. I did get a hold of a high school student who was interested in some will it runs and was pretty enthusiastic about that and in between his time off of school to be available and me needing to get this video out in time for the big iron auction. I didn't quite finish that will it run with him. I was kind of trying to take it slow and give him the best educational value. And so this is kind of where we're at. Can't represent starting it up, but it was a good solid running car when they parked it as far as the engine and trans were concerned and I think just mainly needed the brake job so that's about all I know about the car second one that I've got listed on the big iron auction currently about the only thing this Datsun has in common with the Oldsmobile is that they're both antiques. <laughs> Dotson's a uh, fairly diminutive little pickup, we'll say. Super, super neat old relic. Pretty rare. I'm thinking what I read, they only sold like 50 of them that were imported to the U.S. that year. Anything that's been imported other places now there's like some of these down in like Costa Rica, Guatemala, El Salvador. They just kind of get used to death. And then out in the island there, they just kind of rust away to nothing. Japan, pretty low survival also. They all just kind of have to go away because there's not the big open spaces out there to store old vehicles you don't have the thousand car junkyards like we do especially out west in the u.s so survival really really low for a pretty low original production and import quantity pretty original truck it's got good patina on the paint if that's what you're into 1200 cc engine 60 horse pretty similar to the british cars have the little pull handle there So here it is, pretty untouched original under the hood. You've got your diminutive four-cylinder and grab the fan belt. She rocks over easy, so probably be pretty good chance that it would run again. These actually have a column shifted manual transmission kind of unique cool old relic there the walmart oil filter it's a pretty uncommon piece back before it was 
the big household name that it is now. See, about the worst of the body damage is just that passenger fender does need to be straightened out, but what's there I think is pretty savable. As far as the body rust, the bed is just excellent. I mean, I don't think this truck really ever got used for actual real work because that floor is super clean. The sides, the one thing we don't really think about on old pickups because everything in the US, basically your fleet sides were all double walled. But these little Japanese pickups of this era had a single wall bed. So if they were ever used for work at all, they get little Audi dings all across that surface. And you can see it's just super, super straight. Each of the little corners does need minor repair. You got kind of a fatigue crack there from age. And then over on the other side, looks like it kind of got backed into something and peeled that back just a bit, but comparatively for what most of these turn into after age and time, that bed's probably just about as pristine as you're going to find. Got the little factory taillights that hang off on the bottom. Cab, decent, does need rest repair in the floor pan, as well as the rocker panels. Those rockers, fairly simple, just to use basic sheet metal tools to build those. I could probably do them with a shear and a brake and a bead roller. Show under the mat here. Again, pretty basic sheet metal tools to build a floor pan, shear and a brake and a bead roller, and a little bit of time and skill. Pretty basic door panels. Just neat truck to look at overall because all the little features like the flipper door handles very very early I believe that's a lowercase d that's upside down mileage shows 14,000 likely turned over but condition of the truck it's hard to say somebody bought this for just a little get around vehicle and didn't really use it too much Another thing I thought was really cool about these is how the front of the truck looks almost like a car and then the bed, you've got your just kind of blocky fleet side look to it. It's pretty, pretty fascinating old relic. Front bumper even still has a spot for a crank. Just one of those vestigial tales of early motoring that carried on. And then another super cool detail. That is a Toshiba headlight bulb. Original assembly line bulb. Catch the little data plate there. It's an L320. Pretty interesting, unique old vehicle. Only one I'd ever seen until Lance down in Texas turned one up. 
His channel is called Restored. I believe they did a will it run on that one. I want to say his was red if I remember right. Thank everybody for watching. Really enjoyed showing these to you. If there's something you're interested in or you have any friends that are interested, be sure to let them know. If you're watching this video early, after I've just posted it, these will still be live to bid on till March 10th. And if it's way down the road later than that, then I guess that's just how it goes.